So we are now properly like just about three weeks into Brexit at this point. And according to the Brexiteers, the only thing that has really gone wrong was that apparently a guy had his sandwich stolen at the border in the Netherlands. And according to them, that's it. That's all that's happened. Now, the thing is, that very incident is actually a microcosm of everything that has been going on. Because as the Brexiteers have been complaining that, oh, it, they're just getting revenge. They're just, you know, they're just nitpicking. No, no, that's what Brexit is. Because it's not just that one sandwich. Lots of people who have been travelling to the continent, to jobs, whatever, they now have to follow the rules. We are no longer in the single market and customs union or in the European Union. We now have to follow their rules. So if you're really angry that that happened for some irrational reason, <laughs> that is because of Brexit. But more stuff has been going on and for some reason the Brexiteers are quite quiet about it. And we're just going to get into that, uh, <laughs> into that article right now. But before we do that, uh, please do remember to hit that like and share button. Also down below, there's a link to my Patreon page and a one of donation link. And thank you very much to the people who do support my channel that way. So, on with the article. So, this comes from the Huffington Post, or Huff Post, whatever you want to call it. Oh, hang on. <laughs> It would come from the Huffington Post if my phone hadn't <laughs> just done that. There we go. So, one of the big things this article gets into when it gets up is the fish. And it was so, so funny because you've only got to compare this month to last month. Last month, all the Brexiteers could talk about was fish. And now, they're mysteriously silent about it. So, this comes from the HuffPost. And the title is, Everything That's Already Gone Wrong Because of Brexit in 2021. So, Boris Johnson was elected Prime Minister in 2019 after repeated promises to get Brexit done and unleash Britain's potential. But the first two weeks after the UK finally left the EU single market, and the orbit of Brussels rules hasn't gone exactly to plan. Instead of unleashing potential, an avalanche of bureaucracy, red tape, controls, checks and unforeseen consequences has left many businesses struggling to adapt. We've seen truckers having their lunch confiscated by the Dutch, much loved products withdrawn from shelves and a fishing industry that Brexit was meant to set free, threatening to dump rotten fish at the gates of politicians. And quite frankly, I would love, I would love that to happen. Um, you know, I said it last, um, last, last this, this, just this weekend on our Good Morning Walk. It's going to be so bizarre when it's not going to happen yet, but it will happen we, when we see the fishing industry saying that we were better off in the EU than we are now. That is going to be absolutely golden. So, here's everything that's gone wrong with Brexit so far. So, truckers travelling from the UK were going hungry in Holland after the Dutch authorities confiscated ham sandwiches from drivers arriving by ferry from the UK under the post-Brexit rules banning people from bringing meat and dairy products into the EU. That's the rule, guys. You know, <laughs> and yet you're like, how, how dare they? No, that is the rule. With a quote saying, Welcome to Brexit, sir. I'm sorry. One official told the driver at Holland, uh, at, sorry, at Hook of Holland Ferry Terminal. So, this is probably the most severe one. One of the UK's biggest delivery firms, DPD, last week temporarily suspended deliveries to the EU 
because of the need to provide extra customs information and warning of fifth of parcels had incomplete or incorrect data attached and had to be returned to sender. John Lewis has scrapped international deliveries and while Fortham and Mason temporarily suspend sales to Northern Ireland and the EU, Debenhams has closed its online business in Ireland due to uncertainty around post-Brexit trade rules. Don't hear any Brexiteers saying anything about these companies, do we? And on the other side of the border, the UK is being isolated. One company, Dutch Bike Bits, said that it would ship to every country in the world apart from the UK, partly because of uncertainty due to Brexit, but also because the government had decided to impose a unique taxation regime which will require every company in the world in the world outside the UK which exports to the UK to apply and collect British taxes on behalf of the British government. For providing this service, they intend to charge, uh, charge a fee to every company in the world, in every country which exports to the UK, the firm said. Clearly, this is ludicrous for one country. But imagine if every country in the world had the same idea. The Belgium beer firm, Beer on the Web, also said that it was stopping exports to the UK because of Brexit measures. So, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> and, you know, we, I, I said this, there's more going on than people actually realise. And some of this stuff just, again, hasn't really been covered by the pro-Brexit press. You'd think they would be. But they're now going, hold on a second, why are we having to collect taxes for the British government? We're not even in the UK. We're a Belgian firm. Why are we having to do this? It doesn't make sense. So, again, that's a firm that used to trade into the UK no longer being able to trade into the UK. But for them, it doesn't matter because they've got the rest of the EU to sell to, which is a far larger market than the UK. So in the long run, yeah, they might take some sort of a hit, but it's not going to be a major hit. So, and some UK firms were meanwhile moving whole parts of their business out of the UK and into the EU to avoid checks. Aston Chemicals told the Financial Times that rather than sending weekly truckloads to the EU from Britain, it would instead import all chemicals uh, for European customers to a subsidiary in Poland. This move means the firm will pay more tax in the EU and employ fewer people in the UK. So, this is, this is probably the most, uh, again, ironic one, because, again, if you remember last December, the Brexiteers couldn't shut up about fish, and now they're silent about this whole fiasco that's currently going on in the fishing industry. So, Leavers repeatedly promised British fishermen that Brexit would allow them to take back control of UK waters. But, instead, seafood exports have been... Uh, completely snarled up with lengthy delays including mountains of paperwork and lengthy vet health checks that can take up to five hours. Donna uh, Fodorsi, I think that's how you say it, Fodorsi, Ford, the chief executive at Seafood Scotland, has said exporters face new bureaucratic non-tariff barriers with not one body able to fix the situation. It's a perfect storm for Scottish seafood exporters. The end of the Brexit transition period has unleashed a layer upon layer of administrative problems resulting in queues, border refusals and complete utter confusion, she said. Jamie McMillan of Scotland's uh, Lochfy Langmousis, I think that's how you say it, uh, meanwhile warned the government, if Scottish exporters can't get their products to market next week, 
we will be at the gates of Westminster and dumping our shellfish on their on their doorstep. And it's not just Scotland either. After uh, after Brixham uh, fish merchant Ian Pikes told the BBC he was no longer able to export his fish to France, uh, French. <laughs> able to transport his fish to France because his firm had been unindated with paperwork. At the moment, we're stuffed, he said. And the Kirkwell trawler, which supplies around 8 to 12 percent of all fish sold in UK fish and chip shops, think about that for a second. One trawler, 8 to 12 percent of all fish sold in fish and chip shops has said meanwhile had been unable to operate because the UK had yet to strike a fishing agreement with non-EU countries in sub-arctic waters where the fish are caught like Norway. Scottish MPs in particular are fuming but Commons leader Jacob Rees-Mogg then told them that fish were now better and happier because they are British fish. And that's just nonsense. There's no such thing as a British fish. Fish do not have nationalities. But again, that's just it's 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 populist nationalist rhetoric and it's completely pointless. But there you go. And Fisheries Minister Victoria uh, Prinness was criticized for revealing that she had not even revealed the Brexit trade, uh, not even yeah, not even revealed that the Brexit trade deal on Christmas Eve because she was busy organising a nativity trail, shows just how much she cares about the fishing industry. But the government has since suggested that it could offer compensation to fishing firms hit by Brexit export problems. Good luck with that. <laughs> This one is, uh, is, is an interesting one. While Johnson's deal achieved tariff and quota free trade between the UK and EU, complicated so-called rules of origin have been introduced for goods flowing both ways. The rules mean that UK firms have to provide where all the parts of the goods that they sell to the EU come from and have hit Marks and Spencer's exports of Percy pigs to Ireland. The sweets are manufactured in Germany, then shipped to the UK, avoiding tariffs under the terms of the deal. But, then to move them onto Ireland, where they start to fall under the rules of origin, because they are British made, and therefore the system views them their origin as uncertain. That means that a tariff may need to be paid to get them back into the EU, because they have been stored in the UK, forcing M&S to temporarily stop selling them in Northern Ireland and the Republic. And the rules affect hundreds of thousands of M&S products, which the retailer has had to stop selling on the island. And border delays, this is, this is another one that's going to get worse as time goes on. Michael Grove has warned that there could be significant disruption at ports like Dover in the coming weeks, as cross-channel trade returns to normal levels. But even with a reduced traffic at the ports, the road, the road Haulage Association last week said only around one in five trucks are being turned away at the channel ports. While ferry companies like DDF said that there was a high volume of vehicles being refused and delayed. Ireland, meanwhile, has forced to, was forced to temporarily ease post-Brexit customs checks after a number of trucks were denied boarding at the Holyhead port in Wales before entering the Republic. And ferry companies, including Stenoline, the Irish and Irish ferries, have been diverting services to avoid UK routes by providing Brexit-busting services due to the mountains of red tape. And Northern Ireland has been placed in a unique position as part of the Brexit arrangements, negotiated by Johnson and Michael Gove, having to follow EU rules on goods in order to maintain the invisible land border with the Republic. But this has meant extensive controls and checks are needed for goods crossing into Northern Ireland from the mainland UK. In response, many companies are now trying to source products from the island 
uh, island of Ireland rather than bring them from the UK mainland. So that is UK companies losing business again. I, oh, I thought this was all about trade, guys, and then you don't seem to care about trade. It seems about something else. The goalposts are constantly moving. Oh. But just one example for the disruption meant that Sainsbury's last week was forced to stock its shelves with spa products having after having to sign a deal with the Hodsendon's Food Wholesalers, which supplies a network of 450 spas and Vivo stores across Northern Ireland. And Gove has since promised to work to alleviate some of the difficulties. But much of that will need EU agreements. So, <laughs> you know, it, uh, Brexit, it never ends. Because to change any of these problems we face, we're going to have to go back to the EU. You know, <laughs> Brexit, it never ends. It never ends. It's a complete cavalcade of of just continuous, it, it, you know, it's a it's a it's a lorry of rotting fish. That's all Brexit is. It was caught fresh, and has just been left there to rot. And Brexit, as we've said before, creates more and more problems. And the more the government try to solve these Brexit problems because there's only two ways we can go here. We can actually try and alleviate many of these problems but that means being a lot closer to the EU orbit or we can decide not to do that and go the complete other way which makes problems even worse for companies now trying to trade into the EU and companies that did trade with UK businesses. And the situation becomes untenable because there's only those two options. And, you know, especially this government is going to do everything it possibly can during its tenure to try and prove that Brexit was a success. So we can't expect them to go, you know, cap in hand back to the EU, which will be funny if they actually are forced to do that and we will probably see that happen probably quite sooner than later but as always um there are problems it's just the brexiteers don't like to talk about them so as always uh thanks for watching please do remember to hit that like and share button and of course down below there's a link to my patreon page and a one-off donation link and thank you very much to the people who do support my channel that way and as always, we'll see you next time.